Gary, the other thing is when we're talking about, you know, when you talk about Gary and you listen to him talk, he talks about teaching, you know, and his staff talks about teaching. And so, and that's my dad. My, I'll never forget my dad. My dad was a teacher, a PE teacher, biology teacher when he was coaching high school football. And so he started as a teacher also. And so the emphasis in their minds has always been about teaching. And that's what allows our, you know, because the young guys that we draft, they, they're not perfect coming out. Maybe there's a one or two or top five guys that really have a chance to, you know, make it a long time in this league, but you never know. But so to be able to teach and when you get them here and how you handle them and, and teach them, it allows us to be – for them to be successful too. And I think that's another big part of why we've been successful is because we draft the right guys, but also we teach them when they get here. You're listening to the MMQB Podcast. So can I ask you a question? How would you like to get three home-cooked meals for free? Well, all you have to do is remember these four letters – MMQB. That's easy, right? Now keep listening and I'll tell you how to get those free meals. Look, we all know there's nothing better than a great home cooked meal. No one makes that easier than Blue Apron. Their mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to all. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals. So they set the highest quality standards for their suppliers and only bring you the best ingredients, all right to your front door. Be sure to check out the great meals that are available during the month of September. You won't be disappointed. Now comes that part about the three free meals I was telling you about. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash MMQB. Think about it. Three meals free just by adding in MMQB, blueapron.com slash MMQB. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. Do not wait. Once again, that's blueapron.com slash MMQB. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Last one for John Elway here in Denver. So, John, I've always wondered this about guys who leave the field and then ended up working either as coaches, scouts, general managers, whatever. So is it the same? Is the level of involvement, intense interest, love of the game, fun of winning on Sunday night, is it the same as being a player or is it a lot different? It's different, but I wouldn't say it's any less satisfying. It's different just as we age and we get older. Obviously, physically, we can't play the game anymore. So it transfers to another, in my situation, and you know, as the GM here and into the personnel side, it transfers into that. Now, is it just as satisfying? Yes, it is. It's different, but just as satisfying. I always look at it as a player. To me, it felt like a great accomplishment to be able to be on a Super Bowl team and get there and to be able to win a Super Bowl. In, in my situation now, I look at it as it's very satisfying. I could after the you know we beat you know Carolina last year and went back to the hotel, you know my gut was telling was just it was satisfied. It was you know uh, you know to be able to be a part of it and you know have something to do with putting this team together getting guys in the right spots and then watching them go out and be successful and and playing great to be able to win a world championship so thinking about that it was you know as i said very very satisfying and and what's keep it it keeps me in it uh, because that's uh you know continue to try to get better and you know now it's you know trying to you know defend it or chase the next one and and see if we can stay in that situation. Because the hard thing about the NFL, no one realizes, I think we have 21 or 22 new guys on our team this year from the championship team, is the amount of turnover every year in this league is getting tougher and tougher all the time. And um, and so that's why it's a challenge every year. And it'll be a challenge again this year. We're excited about opening on Thursday night, and we'll see what happens. Well, nobody ever has had a handoff of a quarterback like one of the best of all time in Peyton Manning to a guy who's never played before in Trevor (laughs) Simeon. But you know what? I really take it that you don't necessarily mind that. I mean, you obviously you'd like to have a, you know, a a pro bowl guy, but you don't mind Trevor Simeon being your quarterback right now. No, I don't. I think that because I think we got good people around him and Peter, I will tell you this. We knew at some point in time, Peyton was going to retire 
And so the best thing for us is because we, we knew we weren't going to be able to replace him because, you know, and obviously we had Brock and thought that that would be the step and that those plans got changed. But, you know, and that's why it was important for us. We started concentrating on the defense. We brought those guys in a couple of years ago, DeMarcus and Keeb, as well as Ward, and got good on the defensive side, f- trying to prepare for the transition. And fortunately, in the transition, we were played such great defense, we were able to win a championship on the way. So hopefully we can continue to do that. John, listen, thank you so much for being so hospitable and generous with your time. Really appreciate it, and good luck this year. Thanks, Peter. All right. All right. It's the MMQB Podcast. I don't know about you, but I'm just not crazy about shaving. Ask my wife. I cut the heck out of myself about twice a month. But anyway, nicks and scratches on your face, they're just not fun. And let's face it, razors are really expensive. That is, I thought they were really expensive until I got my first package of razors from Harry's. Harry's blades are high-quality, high-performance German blades crafted by shaving experts, and they feel amazing. It's the best shave I've had in years. The really good part is Harry's offers a high-quality shave that's better for your face and your wallet. It's about half the price of the other brands, and they ship it free right to your front door. Why pay 30 bucks for an 8-pack of blades when you can get them for half that at harrys.com? They have a starter set that's an amazing deal. For $15, you get a razor handle, moisturizing shave cream, and three blades. It's called the Truman. Now comes the best part of all. Go to harrys.com right now, and Harry's will give you $5 off your order if you type in my coupon code, KING. That's K-I-N-G with your first purchase. You see that? Just by typing in four little letters, your price goes from $15 to $10. It's that easy. That's harrys.com, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, and enter the coupon code KING, K-I-N-G, at checkout for $5 off and start shaving better today. This is the MMQB Podcast. Here with Philip Rivers, San Diego Chargers quarterback, and Philip. Here we are. We sit in the bowels of Qualcomm Stadium, and it's got to be a strange feeling for you. This is all you have ever known as an NFL quarterback, and yet this could be it. And so I wonder, for you and for some of your veteran teammates, what thought goes through your mind as you step on the field here, knowing that on November 8th, They may be telling you, oh, by the way, this is it for San Diego. Well, it's unique, to say the least. You know, Peter, we thought last year, that Miami game, that last home game last year, was was emotional, was special, was all... This was the last game of the season in which you had no idea if you were ever coming back. No, and it was essentially a farewell here. That's how the fans acted in the game. That's how they... I mean, they stayed out after. We went back out after the game, after the locker room, and signing autographs. It was it was a goodbye. I was emotional doing a radio interview with old teammate Nick Hardwick because, you know, you mentioned it. So many memories on that field, both good and bad, but just this is it was kind of just a it was a rough day. And so then then to find out later when I thought for sure we were up the road that we're gonna have one more year and they're gonna try to get something done in San Diego, it was almost like getting something new although we've this place is old we've been here forever it was almost like signing that uh, the free agent that you thought you lost you know and so it's great to be back this year but it is it's unique it's weird you know the one thing we have is not a lot of veterans that have been here a long time you know besides Gates and I there's not another guy's been here more than five years so there aren't a ton of guys that that I think appreciate. I know there's a lot of guys on our team that do a lot in the community. They're involved. I just mean that appreciate the relationship of the Chargers and the community and what they mean to each other, vice versa. But so I, it is a unique year. I, we know we can't control it, but the best thing I think is players. The thing, our approach has got to be hopefully we win a bunch of games between now and November 8th that people are excited about our team and, and that even might, might sway them just there at the end to, to go out there and vote to keep, you know, build that stadium and keep us here. Philip, so last night I came into town, and as we record this, we're late in training camp. And so I came into town, and I watched four. I went over to Petco Park, and I watched four innings of the Padres game. And I just am thinking to myself watching, I said, this place is perfect. This ballpark is perfect. Downtown is perfect. 
it's just it's a great place to have a stadium to have a team and i just think somebody's got to ride in on a white night i don't know who it is but somebody has got to make sure that the nfl never leaves this city some of the greatest nfl games i have ever covered have been right in this stadium and i know this is old i know they need a new stadium but this town is a football town so how do you feel about just San Diego as a football town and whether it definitely deserves to go on as a football town? I mean, I think so. I mean, I, you're right. I mean, I, in the last 12 years, I've seen – you mentioned some of the games, and I know you're speaking probably some of Super Bowls and other games, but here so many awesome games and atmospheres and, and runs we've been on, and we've, we've fallen short, obviously, of, of the ultimate goal. But – it's a great town and a great football town. And I think, too, you mentioned the downtown. And, and you know, we go so many places, some, some that are popping up in my mind, Pittsburgh and Cincy and, I don't know, other places where the, the, Seattle, where the ballpark, the baseball park, and then you look across the street or right down the road, you see the football stadium, and it's awesome going in there. And I think about I – was, I wasn't here before Petco, but what I hear and what I see of how it revitalized that whole downtown area, the gas lamp down there, just sit, thinking about a stadium being right down there, not only the setting for Sunday afternoon, for our games, but what it'll bring to the community from conventions to Final Fours to Super Bowls. I can imagine it'd be on the, on the rotation. I can't imagine it not being here in February. It's about as good as it gets. So 55 years Chargers have been here. I mean, I can't imagine uh, them only having one pro franchise in the Padres not having football here after 55 years. And so I certainly am biased and hopeful that uh, we'll stay here. Philip, a lot has been said. You have, I believe, seven children. Is that right? Eight. 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 I I lose count sometimes. (laughs) But you have eight children. You love San Diego. San Diego is your home. If this team moves to Los Angeles, what are you going to do? I don't know. I, I don't know. We've last year when, like I said, when it was going to the vote and all that, and we thought it was all but done. We were discussing all options from from commuting to renting an apartment up there to moving up there and renting. I don't know because we are. I mean, my family. We've moved here with one child. Now we have eight, and it's been home for us for twelve years. And this is the thirteenth season here. And 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 that was more about you know my comments last year. Uh, everybody was thinking, "Oh, Rivers wants out. He hates L.A." And it, I don't hate L.A. I don't know enough about L.A., but I love San Diego. And it was more of that than it was a disdain for anything up north so it would be tough on on everybody and you know it's not oh feel sorry for us people have to move in their jobs all the time but it would be tough to say the least so is it possible that if this team moves to los angeles you won't move with it well i'll be i'll hope to (laughs) intend to be the be playing uh being the quarterback for the team but it's possible that i won't have a home there i guess uh, that's it's too hard to say i don't know where the facility will be right. who knows uh, if it's even manageable as much time as i spend up there during the year uh, football season at least but it would be hard to leave this community and, and move up the road one more question about this when i think about a vote that has to take place and people talking about public money that has to be spent no one wants to spend public money really to help people who are wealthy they want to spend public money you know to help schools and everything if you sort of look at this dispassionately and know that we're talking about a four percent increase in the hotel motel sales tax and the average person in san diego is not going to spend any money for this this is going to be the visitors to the town so what would be your sales pitch to people in san diego to get them to vote yes on november 8th well, what you said is about exactly what I know of it. Uh, I don't know the deep, deep details of it, but exactly as you described it is how, as I know it, which is what makes me think from that standpoint, it's a no brainer from that standpoint, because that's where it would really be hard for me to say, hey, you need to vote for the stadium if it's going to come out of the people of this community's pocket. I, I mean, I can't tell them they should vote for that, right? I can't in good conscience do that. But when I think about, the, so many people come to visit here in San Diego and I think about a 4%, when I think about it, just me thinking a 4% increase, I go, they're still going to come. They're still going to come. <laughs> they're going think, to San Diego I don't Zoo. I think they're not going to see her on the zoo and go on their summer vacation because that hotel is going to be a little more expensive. So that's how I look at it in my most honest way, honest opinion. So I know there's way more ins and outs to it, I'm sure. Uh, but that's why I think, and I hope that we can educate everyone on that because that's why it does make sense to me when it would be a lot more difficult when you're trying to, you know, tax the, uh, 
local residents. Finishing up with Philip Rivers, quarterback of the San Diego Chargers, let's focus on a couple of football things. Number one, 